Do you have a boring old kitchen that needs some updating, but you don't necessarily have the money to renovate it or gut it or anything? Well, then this video is for you. Hey, welcome back to my channel. For those that don't know me, my name is Kayla. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to paint your kitchen cabinets to give it a nice, fresh, new, updated look without spending all this crazy money. Because let's be honest, okay, when you renovate your kitchen, it's really pricey. It's probably the most expensive room in your house to renovate. Now painting your cabinets is an easy way to give it a whole new look without the pricey price tag. So I'm super excited to share today's video with y'all. This is a project I have been dying to tackle since we moved into our house. So before we get into the video, I just wanna let you guys all know that I am not a professional in any way. I'm just a savvy DIYer that loves to save a buck or two. And if you love a lot of DIY projects just like me, then please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and hit that little bell so you can know each and every time I upload a video. Now I will be sharing all of the products that I'm gonna be using in this video and I will be linking them down below um, just in case if you're interested in using any of these projects. Now this video is not sponsored in any kind of way but I recommend each of these products. I have grown to love them and they are awesome. So with all that, let's go ahead and jump into the video. So before you start painting or prepping your kitchen cabinets, you need to remove all of the cabinet doors as well as the hinges and any of the hardware that you have on your cabinets. And you need to make sure you label each of the cabinet doors because when you're going to reinstall them, you need to place them back exactly where they're going to go or you're going to run into some mismatch and have a headache when you're reinstalling them. And put all of the hinges and hardware in separate baggies. Now to keep yourself extra organized, you can always sketch out the layout of your kitchen so you can help you when you're reinstalling all of the cabinet doors as well as the drawers. Now I left all of the cabinet hinges on my cabinet since they are hidden behind my cabinet doors. But I did keep all of the screws separate in separate little baggies. So before you start painting, the most important thing is your prep work. Now it's best to do every step and not skip out on anything so you can save a lot of time and headaches um, in the future uh, if you do every, uh, if you prep your surfaces well before you get into the whole painting process. So since this is a kitchen, you need a really heavy duty uh, cleaner, degreaser, since we do a lot of cooking and all that, there's a lot of grease and grime and dirt all over our cabinets. And we're gonna, I'm using the, the TSP. This is a all purpose heavy duty cleaner uh, that preps and primes uh, your surfaces for painting as well as it's good for any uh, cleaning around your home. So I already have a gallon of warm water right here, which is about 16 cups of warm water. And they have measurements on here for you and tell you exactly how much solution you need per gallon. Uh, I already pre-mixed it, which is about 16 ounces for a gallon of warm water. You will also need uh, some sponges and some gloves because this is a pretty harsh on our skin. So to protect our skin, gloves is a must and a cloth. Now I really soaked the sponge when it came to cleaning my kitchen cabinets since they were super dirty. Now don't be scared to really saturate the cabinet doors because they are probably super dirty and you want to make sure you get all the grease and grime off and wipe it off with a cloth once you're done cleaning it and make sure you clean both sides and all the edges of your cabinet doors and wipe off the excess cleaner. Thank you. 
Now when it comes to cleaning the frame of your kitchen cabinets, I added this solution into a spray bottle and I would spray it directly on a microfiber towel and really scrub any of the, the whole entire kitchen and make sure everything was nice and degreased and clean. Now you're going to have to remove all of the items from your kitchen cabinet drawers so you can clean them better and prep them better for painting. Now I used a box that I had laying around the house to put all the items I had in each drawer to help keep myself more organized and make it easier when I'm putting everything back in each of my drawers. So once you remove them, you just clean them exactly like you did with all the cabinet doors. Next, you're going to label each of the drawers just like you did with the cabinet doors um, and label them exactly like you have them on the sketch that you made for your kitchen. So when you reinstall them, you know exactly where they're going to go. Once you've cleaned everything in the kitchen, you're going to go ahead and sand all of the cabinet doors and drawers as well as the frame of the kitchen. Now you're just roughing up the surface a little bit so any medium grit sandpaper would do well. I'm using 120 grit here um, just so when you do prime all of the surfaces of your kitchen, um, the paint has a nice surface to adhere to. Now don't worry if you do not have an electric sander you can sand everything by hand with a sandpaper or a sand sponge and you can see I used a combination of both the electric sander and a sanding sponge. Next, you're going to go in with a tacky cloth or a microfiber towel and clean up all of the dust and the debris that's left over so it does not get mixed in with your primer paint. You're going to repeat the same process on your whole entire kitchen with sanding the frame of your kitchen. Now I used a combination of both a electric sander and a sanding sponge to sand the frame of my kitchen. Now the sanding sponge worked great if you have any detailed like you see on the very top of my kitchen frame. Now don't worry if you do not have an electric sander, like I've said, you can sand your whole entire kitchen by hand using sandpaper or a sanding sponge. Just make sure you apply the same pressure around all of your kitchen surfaces. Make sure you clean off any of the excess dust from the sanding and with a microfiber towel or a tackle cloth. Now it's time to start priming your whole entire kitchen. This is the brand that I used. What I like about this brand is that it has very low odor, which is awesome since I do have a little one at home. Now it's very important to prime your whole entire kitchen before putting the top coat on for an additional protection, durability, and it also helps to have a nice base for your top coat. Before I started painting my cabinets, I did lay down some of this rosin paper to protect all of these surfaces that I did not want paint to get on. And I got this big huge roll at Lowe's for really cheap and I just taped it down so it would not move or shift. I also applied this paper to all of my countertops for easier cleanup once this project was done and so no paint would get on them. What I liked about this product is it's a lot better than using drop cloths. And I have so much left over, I can use it for a lot of future projects. When it comes to painting the frame of your kitchen cabinets, it's best to work from top to bottom so you do not ruin any of the paint on your lower cabinets. Now, I used a combination of a foam roller as well as a little brush to help me get into any of the details that I had on my kitchen cabinet. Now, since I did leave the hinges on the frames of my kitchen cabinets, I just made sure to not get any paint on them. And if I did get paint on them, I just cleaned it off with a damp cloth before the paint dried. I applied two coats of primer on the whole entire frame of my kitchen cabinets. So if you're like me and you're a perfectionist, then you would want to do this next step. 
and that is hiding the wood grain on your cabinets. Now, oak cabinets tend to have a very dominant wood grain on them, and once you paint them, you'll see the wood grain texture on your cabinets. Now, if that's something that doesn't bother you or you don't have oak cabinets, you can go ahead and skip this step. I'll place a time step right here, and you can go ahead and skip to the next step. So the easiest and the cheapest way to disguise those ugly wood grains is spackling. I know, crazy. Now this is the cheapest product you can use to hide those grains um, compared to other wood grain products out there. And all you need is a two inch spatula to move the product around your cabinet. So let me go ahead and show you how to get rid of the wood grain on your oak cabinets. Now you're gonna get a small amount of the spackling product and move it back and forth in sections on the whole entire cabinet door until you fill in all of the grain texture on the cabinet door. Now make sure you only apply a very thin layer of this spackling product. You can also use your finger as well to get into any of the little details on your cabinet door if you have any. I did not apply any of the spackling to the backs of any of my cabinet doors. I only focused on the front end of the cabinet doors and drawers of my kitchen. So this is what your cabinet door will look like once you've applied the spackling product on the entire cabinet door. Now this is what I love about this product that you know when it's dry because it goes from pink to white. Now I also applied some of the spackling to the open faced portions of the cabinet frame. I did not worry about the frame on the kitchen cabinets where the cabinet doors were going to go since the doors would be covering those ends, but I did not want any texture or grain on the pieces that people could see, so I used the spackling. Once it has dry, you're gonna go ahead and sand off any of the excess spackling product lightly with a 240 grit sandpaper. Now I'm using my electric sander here, but like I said, you can also use a sandpaper or sanding block to do this. And you're just gonna lightly sand off all of the excess spackling product till it's nice and smooth. Next, you're gonna get a microfiber towel or a tackle cloth to wipe off any of the excess dust left behind. And you're gonna repeat this process on each of your cabinet doors and drawers as well. Now you can see right here that all of the wood grain is all filled in and it's all white. So you can see that those texture is not gonna show up behind the paint once you paint your cabinet doors and drawers. After you've done all the prep work on your cabinet doors and drawers, the next step is to prime them and get them ready for painting. And I'm gonna show you a really cool way to paint your cabinet doors that saves you a ton of time when it comes to painting. You're going to act Hang them up so you can paint both the front and back portion of your cabinet doors. So let me show you how to do that. So these are the items that you're gonna need to paint all your cabinet doors. You're gonna need some wooden hangers that spin 360. As well, you're gonna need some of these cup hooks. You're gonna need two hooks per cabinet door. As well, you're gonna need some of these screw eye hooks for your hanging station as well as your painting station. Now, if your hangers do not spin 360, you can use this swivel forge hook. Now we're gonna go ahead and mark off where we're going to put all of the cup hooks on our cabinet doors. So right here, I use the hanger as reference so I know exactly where I'm going to mark off where I'm gonna make my pilot holes per cabinet door. Once you've marked off exactly where you're gonna drill your pilot hole, go ahead and drill your pilot hole on top of your cabinets. Now, depending if you're working with the top cabinets, you're going to make the holes on the top edge of the cabinet doors so nobody will see the holes. And if you're working with the bottom cabinets, you're gonna go ahead and drill the pilot holes on the bottom edge of the cabinet doors. Now, right here, once you drill your pilot hole, you're gonna go ahead and add in those cup hooks. Now my daughter wanted to help me out with this portion so she kept handing me the hooks when I needed them.
Now you just attach the hanger to the hooks and now your cabinet doors are ready to be painted. And you just repeat this whole entire process on all your cabinet doors so you can get them ready for painting. Now this hanging paint method only applies if you're going to be painting your kitchen cabinets either with a electric paint gun or a paint gun that you hook up to an air compressor. Now when it comes to painting kitchen cabinets or any cabinets in your home, I highly, highly recommend investing in a paint gun when it comes to applying paint to them. Uh, it just gives a really nice, smooth application process as well as it's a lot faster painting them. Now both of these, whether it's electric or one you hook up to an air compressor, they're both very inexpensive. I got both of these off of Amazon for about $30. Now you can also pick them up from your local hardware store and both will do just fine when it comes to painting your kitchen cabinets. Now don't worry if you don't have a paint gun that is okay. You can still paint your kitchen cabinet doors and drawers by hand. You just have to paint them one side at a time. So this is the painting station where I'm gonna paint the cabinet doors. My husband added a two by four to the top of the car part and we put a screw hook at the bottom so I can hook the cabinet doors to the bottom. We added the two by four to lower it a little bit so it can be easier for me to paint all the cabinet doors. Now before you start painting, make sure you remove the labels to each of the cabinet doors so you do not lose which cabinet door you are working with and put it on the hanger. Now your cabinet doors are ready to be primed. You just hook it on there and make sure it's nice and level before you start painting. So while I painted all the cabinet doors, my daughter was being such a good little girl, watching her tablet in the car. So I did this whole entire project on my own. You can do it too, just keep your little kiddos busy. Now to paint my cabinet doors, I started off by painting the grooves of the cabinet doors. Then I worked on spray painting the outer edges and then I went into the center of the cabinet door using a back and forth swiping method until the whole entire cabinet door was colored. Now I put two coats of prime on my top cabinet door since I wanted them to be super vivid white and I only put one layer of priming coat on the bottom cabinet doors since they were gonna be a darker color. It already looks so good even though I'm just adding the primer to the cabinet door. Once you finish painting the cabinet doors, hang it up so it can dry. Now my husband built this custom built drying rack for me with some 2x4s as well he added some screw hooks so I can put the so I can hang up the doors here. Now what's great about this is you can build it as big as you want or as small as you need it and you can put it anywhere in your home. We built ours and put it in our gym. Now you're going to go ahead and get your drawers ready to be primed and painted. So you're going to add some of the, the resin paper to your cabinet drawers so you do not get any paint on the inside of your drawers. Now I just got some tape to tape it down so it would not shift or move while I was painting and to fill in any of the cracks where the paint will not go. So you can paint the drawers to your kitchen two ways by either propping them up like you see here or you can paint them on the floor by laying down some cardboard like this. Depending on which method you use to spray paint the drawers to your kitchen, each work good. I loved using this prop up method to paint the cabinet drawers to my kitchen because it was so much faster to paint the drawers to my kitchen. But you can still paint them on the floor like you see right here. I primed all of the doors and drawers to my whole entire kitchen and gave it a whole entire day to dry before I started to apply the top coat to my kitchen. So I use this Valspar cabinet furniture paint 
for the top coat of my kitchen and I used this blue color for the my bottom of my kitchen because I wanted a two-tone kitchen just to give a nice little pop of color without going overboard. Before I applied my top coat to my kitchen cabinets, I did want to get rid of all these imperfections that you see right here. Now it's how you do this is you're going to sand in between each coat of paint so you can get rid of any imperfections so you can have a nice smooth look to your cabinets. Now you're going to need a 220 sandpaper just to give a nice light little sand just to smooth out your surface of before applying your next coat of paint. After you sand, make sure you wipe off all the excess dust before you start painting again. For my top coat, I added two coats on my whole entire kitchen and I allowed eight hours each in between each coat of paint. Before I applied my next top coat, I did sand down in between each coat of paint just to get rid of any imperfections like you see right here. I know it's a lot of sanding, but trust me, it's going to be worth it in the end um, and you're going to have a really nice, smooth, professional look to all your kitchen cabinets. Now I gave it just a light little sand like I did before um, with these 220 grit sandpaper and wiped it down before I painted it again. Make sure you clean your paint gun thoroughly after you completed the whole entire project as well as when you're going to be switching between colors. Now you do this by adding some hot water to the paint can canister and spray it until you see no more paint come out and the water solution is all sprayed out. Now this is very important so your paint gun does not get all jammed up and you can use it for future projects. This is our first coat to the bottom cabinet doors. It looks really bright on camera. This color is actually darker in person. I just want to show you how smooth this paint applies to the cabinet doors. After you finish painting your whole entire kitchen, you can reattach all your cabinet doors and put your drawers back. My husband helped me out with this because it was a lot easier for someone to hold the door while you screwed the door back in. I just cannot believe how the kitchen turned out. It looks so amazing and it's so much brighter and bigger since we painted the kitchen. Now we just got to get rid of the brown countertops and the orange backsplash but I could not be any happier with how the kitchen turned out. kitchen a makeover by just simply painting your kitchen cabinets I hope this video has inspired you to go out there and paint and DIY your kitchen and give it a fresh new look and if it does inspire you please give this video a big old thumbs up and if you have not already please subscribe to my channel and hit that little bell so you know each and every time I upload a video so until next time, have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Show you how to hide those pesky grains, wood grains. So with all, no. <laughs> you know how easy it is to give you, yeah. Just need to take a deep breath. I'm just talking too fast. Okay. Yeah, yeah, mm, 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 yeah, oh.
Oh, okay. All right, so I'm done. I'm done. Sorry. Okay. Now you know how easy it is to. Wait, did I say that? I hope I did not miss anything. Yeah. Yeah, again. Again? Okay.